brush video part two. Hopefully I can condense this one a little bit. We'll see. The first one is long. It's almost an hour long because I went through everything for the first time with all the different types of brushes and everything. So I'm going to have that part of the video where I talk about the different hairs of the brushes in this video. But if you've watched the face brush video, you can just fast forward through that or just skip right to it. I'll have timestamps. So that part is done. That, that part will come up next. And then right after that, we will delve into the different types of brush shapes. Let's talk about the, um, the brands that we're gonna do today. So I'm gonna do Wayne Goss. I'm gonna do Sonia G. I'm gonna do Surat. I'm gonna do Suku. I'm gonna do um, Hakuhodo and Chikahodo and Koyoto. I am not gonna go beyond that. There are more brushes out there. There are lots of more brushes out there. <laughs> lots and lots of more. Um, yeah, lots, there's, there's so many different types of brushes and brands. That's where I'm gonna stop it though, okay? Because, it, like again, I don't want this to be a 17 hour video. So, okay, let's talk about hairs. The softest ones I have are gray, are squirrel brushes. Let's, let's start there. Softest ones I have are squirrel brushes. There are very different types of squirrel. There's blue and gray, which is usually considered the softest. There is um, red and Canadian. And there is Kazan. And there's also another kind that's, it'll come to me in a second. But what I wanna say about the squirrel brushes in general is that they're all very soft. If you have very sensitive skin like I do um, and prone to things like rosacea or reactive skin, you might wanna go for a brush like that. They are more expensive in general, but they are very, very soft. And so they don't irritate your skin as much as maybe a, a, you know, a more dense, quote, scratchy brush. Although none of my brushes are scratchy, but you get the idea. Okay, so a gray squirrel or blue squirrel, they are very soft bristles. They provide a sheer airbrushed kind of look, natural looking finish, uh, very suitable for, for sensitive skin, especially very sensitive skin. Um, and they won't over apply things. So this is a Surat brush. Um, this is the powder, I believe. And you can see this is a very big brush, but it's a very soft brush. Like this feels like, it's almost like silk over your fingertips. Like it's the softest thing you've ever felt. Um, if you ever petted a chinchilla, it feels like that. So it's incredibly soft, just absolutely beautiful. These are usually, you know, crafted, all the brushes I have are crafted by hand. These are people who are, you know, who spend years putting their craft together about how to hand tie the, the hairs together. And depending on how the hairs are put into a, a, a ferrule and they're put into this brush handle and all those things, depends on how expensive the brush is and how long the hairs are. The longer the hair, depending on the type of brush, the more expensive it can be. But what I would tell you is that if you're looking for something that has a very ethereal, light, airy, airbrush kind of look, you want to, and it's very soft. A gray squirrel, or here's a blue squirrel, which is the, this was the ox um, that was at Beauty Lash. I have the year of the rat in here too, because that's the year I was born. Um, and here's a Chickahoto one. So like, um, not a, um, this was part of a set. Same kind of thing. You can see they're very similar brushes. The Canadian squirrel is incredibly rare. Uh, it's, it's highly valued. Again, it has like a uniform body and it's really easy to control. It's very short haired usually. So you don't have usually long hair with a Canadian squirrel. Um, there's white and red varieties. It's really, again, a very soft brush, really beautiful. Uh, pine squirrel is in eyeshadows. Um, it's very soft, but it's a very thin bristle. And honestly, I don't think I have, no, I don't have any. Red squirrel is one of the rarest. Um, red squirrel is something you don't see very often. And like I said, I don't have very many. Here's a Kyoto one, incredibly soft, very, very similar to blue, um, but more delicate in the touch. Again, you have to be very careful how you wash all of these brushes, like all of them. Um, okay, then we have a uh, Kazan squirrel. And it again is, is quite rare. It's brown squirrel. Um, it's kind of known for its fine, like silky hair. This is the KZ brushes. These are um, by uh, Chikahoto. And I think, I think you could still get, well, secondary markets, but anyway, we'll talk about that later. Um, it's softer than gray. It has a unique wave to it that kind of has like an airy quality so you can pick up more with these. So what I would say is like the gray and the blues are incredibly soft as are the red squirrels. Um, but these are soft. Yeah, they're just as soft, 
but there's like a bounce to these that picks up more product. So if you need something really soft on your skin, like you're reactive, your skin is very sensitive, and you want to pick up more product, the Kazans are a great choice. Now let's talk about the Silver Fox. I don't actually have a ton of these. I have two sets in the Silver Fox and they are both Chikahotos. They are the FO series and the Zen series. I'm pretty sure the Zen series is gone, but again, they're secondary markets and we'll talk about the sets later. Um, this is an FO3 and this is a highlight brush in the um, Zen series. This is kind of a angled brush. Again, we'll talk about brush shapes in a sec. But I wanted to show you Silver Fox, very soft, very much like a gray squirrel, but there's more elasticity in these. There's more resilience. Um, usually what you'll see is like a white base and then an ash brown or ash gray kind of top to it. You can see that has that same kind of look. Um, I would not recommend, again, I don't really recommend any of these for cream products, but some people do use them, but you can damage them. So I wouldn't do it. Um, I really like the Silver Fox. I think they're quite uh, beautiful. I think they're, you know, like I said, as soft as the, the squirrels. And they do have more uh, more resilience. They, they feel like they can do, um, I feel like they can do more, right? Um, I feel like they can deposit a little bit more than the soft, the softness of the gray and the blue squirrels because they're so soft. They're really meant for a lighter application. Uh, but you know, in, in feel, they're, they're very similar. Okay. So let's, again, I'm going through these quickly, guys. If you have questions, put them down below, or if you really want a, uh, you know, like I said, a series, let me know. Then is goat. Goat is the most, uh, often used. Uh, it's really, it's a common used bristle. And basically there's different levels. There's just goat. When you see that, you're not exactly sure what level it is, but generally it's the lower level, lowest level. Um, there's uh, Sokoho, I never get these names right, Sokoho, uh, which is, um, it's great for a beginner because it's it's a more reasonable, like it's easier to get. Um, it's durable, it's not as delicate, it's soft to work as a finishing brush, but it has enough strength to do like a blush and a highlight and an eyeshadow. They're good brushes. They're like the, they're like the workhorse of the, of the brush world. Um, they're really, really nice. Psycoho, which is what I have. I have all Psycoho, except for one brush. Um, it's the highest quality in general. I'll explain in a minute. And each type is suited to like different purchases, like different uh, budgets. So some are very expensive. Some are more reasonable. The Wayne Goss ones are the new set. Those are Psycoho. The uh, old Sony G is the Sky and the Fundamental Psycoho. Lots of Psycoho out there, guys. I have buckets of Psycoho. I'll show you in a sec. Um, but it also depends on like um, the length of the bristle, how it's bundled, all those things go into how the brush performs. And I would also say, um, these pick up, um, more product and they apply more heavily than the squirrels. And if you're gonna use liquids and creams, I would go with the goat and not the squirrels. Again, I don't do that, but if you're gonna, do use the goats. Um, and then the Psy B Coho, I have one brush, literally. <laughs> one brush. Um, this is a Sonia G set that came out and um, they are long, luminous, and very fine. Um, they're, they're kind of like a lightness. There's a tip, they're just, these are, these are hard to find. <laughs> And when you do find them, they're very expensive. Um, and they're very soft. It might even be softer in some, depending on the Sai uh, Bikoho brush that you buy. It might even be softer than some of my, my squirrel brushes. I would say they are very rare. They sell out very quickly. Um, I recently put a, a notice up about a Sai Bikoho brush uh, on, that was available on Beautylish. I think there was like 200 of them or something for like three something. It's the pink one. I'll put up a picture. That is Sai B Coho. The pink one is. That is very rare. And at that price, that's a pretty good price. Uh, usually a brush, like a, a face brush, is more like around the $500 mark. So that was a good deal. Um, let me show you first really quickly, and then we'll go into the last group. Um, my, these are all Sai Coho. Okay. So if I ever post something about buying more Psycoho brushes, please throw something at me because I do not need it anymore. All right. 
Last but not least is Kalinske. I get a lot of questions about my Kalinske brushes because they're kind of unique looking. Many of them are in this orange or red <laughs> uh, handles. Um, these are Coyotos, the red ones. These are Kalinske brushes. And then these are what are called the uh, Hakuhodo Vermilion series. Vermilion just refers to the handles. They have different types of brushes with these handles. Some are Kalinske, some are uh, Squirrel. There's all different kinds. And Kalinske is very hard to find, uh, very rare here in the US. Uh, many of them kind of disappeared as of last year. And many of my friends said, buy them now, and I didn't, because I'm an idiot. Uh, so now they're much harder to find, and you're really probably gonna have to go on the secondary market here in the United States. Overseas, you can get them. Um, the thing about Kalinske is it's pretty fine and pretty soft. It's not as soft as the, as the squirrels, but it's one of those things that is incredibly resilient. It picks up everything. It feels nice on the skin. Um, it works with cream and liquids. Again, I try not to do that with my natural hair brushes, but it does work. Um, uh, if you have a product, an eyeshadow, for example, that's not working, like you can't get the pigment off the, like you can't pick up any pigment and your Kalinske brush doesn't work, there's no hope for the eyeshadow. The Kalinske brush, every single time, that is where, you know, I get comments from all of you where you're like, what brush was that? That's Kalinske, every time. Um, they're absolutely amazing. And um, honestly, I can't say enough about how good they really are. So now that we've gone through the types of brushes and brush hairs, we're gonna talk about shapes. So I'm gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna do lay down brushes, I'm gonna do crease brushes, I'm gonna do um, smudger brushes, pencil brushes, and then I'm gonna have sort of a unique category. There are, in each broad category, there's lots of different sizes of all these things. I'll try to sort of pick up on a little bit of that each time I talk about these types of brushes. But again, I wanna to try to make this one a little shorter than the other one, if I can. So let's start with a lay down brush. What does a lay down brush mean? A lay down brush means that it's flat. Flat like this. The length, the size, all depends on the type of lay down brush. This one I would consider like to be a medium lay down brush. This one I would consider to be a large lay down brush. Some are flatter, some are fluffier, some are thicker, uh, and some uh, are bigger and smaller. Um, let me show you a really small one so you can get the idea of what I mean by a small lay down brush. Again, they are flat. They tend to have sort of a little bit of a rounded top. And what these brushes are for are exactly what they sound like, to lay down product. Basically to take eyeshadow and put it on the eye, like this. You're laying it down. You can also pat eyeshadow on with a brush like this. So I'm gonna go through the different lay down brushes that I have. We're gonna talk about you know which ones I tend to gravitate towards the most. And then of course, the differences between the types of hairs as I mentioned in the, in the first part of this video. So let's first talk about the softest ones, which are the squirrel blue, girl, uh, blue and gray, and then um, the Kazan. So blue, I have a number of, of different ones and the same with, with, with the gray. Um, the blue, I would say, the one that I get the most questions about is the S121. Um, this is a Hakuhodo brush. This also comes in the vermilion handles, which looks like this, but they didn't have it in stock. So you can see how the shape is just a little bit different. This is a Kalinske. This is a, like I said, blue squirrel. It's shorter. Um, this is more of a tapered, almost like that candlelight shape. Whereas this lay down brush is like a rounder shape. So you're gonna be able to point this into like an inner corner, for example. This one is Suku um, and is gray squirrel. And you can see it's so much bigger. I mean, it's a much bigger, fluffier brush, but it's the same softness, very soft on the eye. You're gonna get a very soft look from this. You're gonna get a, you know, more, a lighter, more ethereal, like I talked about with the, with the squirrel brushes on your eye. It's not gonna be anything that's um, a heavy lay down product. Then if you go into the Kazan Squirrel, I have the KZ07. This is a very small lay down brush. But again, if you want to get into like the, the inner corner of the eye or outer corner of the eye, 
You just want to put it flat on. You're going to have, this is going to be very soft. It's going to, it's going to lay down a little bit more than the blue and the gray. Then we have the red squirrel. Um, I have two different versions of this. It's the leaping bunny one, which is like sort of pointed and small. And then we have the Coyoto, which is, this is uh, the red squirrel, a rounded shape. Again, this is gonna provide more of that inner corner being able to get into like a tighter spot. And this is gonna be a rounder area that's gonna allow you to just put it on the, like, the surface of the eye. But these are still relatively small ones. They aren't, um, you know, for the whole eye, if you're trying to do like a one and done, don't necessarily recommend those. Uh, but again, all very soft, lighter look. The Kazans will pick up a little more, red will pick up a little more, uh, but still, you know, a soft brush, a, a squirrel brush. If you get into the Canadian squirrel brushes, I do have some that are also lay down brushes. Again, soft. These are rare brushes, very, very soft lay down. Um, these are Sonia G's and these are, you know, smaller in size. Um, as I mentioned with these, generally you don't have long hairs in this particular type of hair, but very, very soft. Um, beautiful to, to lay down something in a soft ethereal. I use a ethereal a lot, but it's that softer, lighter skin-like um, application. It's not for something that you're trying to build like heavy pigment. You can build with them, but again, that's not what I choose to use those for. The ones that I would say are best for picking up more pigment um, and being sort of that mid-ground are again, the Psychoho Goats, just like the face powder, um, face brushes. This is the Jumbo Blender, which is fantastic. They call it a blender because you notice, although it's a lit, you can lay it down, use it as a lay down brush like this. You can also go back and forth in the crease with this one and blend out the product. It's used either way, depending on you know what you want to use it for, but it's denser so that if you want to pack on more pigment, you can definitely do that. With the new Wayne Goss brush, this is the E4, similar kind of shape as the ones I showed you before the, of the scroll brushes. Soft, easy to use, just you know a, a wonderful lay down brush and, and packs a lot of punch. It really does lay down quite a bit of product. The Sonia G Worker 3, again, almost like a finger, like this one's a little bit thicker. And when you're looking for something that you're having difficulty you know, picking up pigment, and you would use your finger, the worker brushes work really well for that. And you can just pack the, the product on and it works extremely well. Last but not least are the Kalinsky brushes. Now, these are the types of brushes that, you know, if you're, if you're having a problem with picking up pigment and you want to lay down something metallic or something that has um, difficulty getting out of the pan, this brush will pick it up and you can lay it, pat it on very easily. It'll stick to the brush and then hopefully stick to your eye. This is the brush that I would say, number one, is my number one lay down brush. I use this brush more than anyone else. This is a 123 and then the other one is a 120. Those are the two that I, that I tend to use. I would say that of these brushes, um, one is big, one is smaller. That's the, they're the same shape, but they are expensive, they're harder to find, and they, they're for when you want more pigment. They're when you want something more on your face. They are not for when you want that light, skin-like kind of look. That's not, that's not what the Kalinskis are for. But if I'm giving you my top three lay-down brushes, the Kalinskis is number one because I just feel like it does something that no other brush does. Like it's able to, it's able to put down product in a way that practically no other brush can. I'd say secondly would be the Wayne Goss brushes just because I really like the size and shape of this. The, the hairs are really nice here and I think they lay down really, really well. Um, he does have bigger brushes like the E1. Again, if you're looking for more of that one and done kind of late, it's more like a worker. Um, so usually a worker brush and you can do the same kind of thing. It's just like, it's more, you know, more like a finger. Um, than a thin lay down brush. Um, so I'd say these are the, the two that are my favorite. And then the third one is the um, Suku, which is the uh, gray squirrel, but this is for a very soft diffused look. This is when I'm going for something very light. This is when I'm just trying to like brush on or maybe even in the um, brow area because I'm trying to do something very light up there and I don't want a lot of pigment this brush and we're gonna put on 
a little bit of eyeshadow. I'm gonna use this shade, this shade here, just to put all over the eye. And again, this is gonna pick up a lot of pigment, so I'm gonna be uh, careful of how I put this on. See how much pigment? Again, if you were looking for something a little more diffused, don't use this brush. So top three, depending on what your use is, Kalinske is the number one. This is the um, Hakahodo S123. Uh, 120 is the same, but same shape, but bigger. That's if you want to put a lot of product down, if you want to pick up a lot. Um, then I would say, you know, if you're looking at the Wayne Goss ones, I think those are really excellent. The um, number 18 is great as well to lay down product. And then if you want something like sort of a one and done, like a big, the E1 that he just came out with, or the E4, if you're looking for something small, those are both all great. This is the um, older version of Wayne Goss brushes, but all great for, for lay down. Sonya G um, also has great fundamental sets, like the, the workers that I was talking about. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more like a finger and you're trying to just smudge it in, you know, those are, those are, those are great. All right, so let's talk about crease brushes. Now, numerous types of um, shapes for a crease brush. So here's one that is a Chikahodo. This is a uh, goat and it's, it's a GSN 10. I don't have many of the GSN products, but you can see that this is a relatively quote normal crease brush shape. Here is one that, um, is from Wayne Goss, uh, a former a former collection of his, 05, and I have a couple of these, uh, and they're goat. And you can see they're similar, but longer. So again, just like the face brushes, the longer it is, the lighter look you're gonna get, the shorter and stubbier, denser. These are both, you know, kind of long, but this is spread out a little bit more. This comes into that more, that candle shape. But again, both, both goat. The um, Sonya G Crease Pro has a very similar shape and about the same size. And then the new Wayne Goss brushes that have just come out, he has two others that are an E3 and a E2, which are really interesting because they're candle shape crease brushes. And the thing about these is see how pointed they are? You can get a very sharp point. This is something, especially for like the outer corner um, or an inner corner look that you wanted to use. These are pretty impressive because I don't really have anything small that's like this. I have some bigger ones, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Then we have the Sonya G Soft Definer, which is one of my favorite brushes. It's just kind of a, it is a crease brush. It's kind of a un unique crease brush though, because it's so small. See how tiny that is? And the great thing about, and this is the Lotus collection, and the other one I kept saying, um, Fusion, I was like, I knew that wasn't right, because the Fusion is the synthetic, and natural hair, I was like, why can I not think of the name? Lotus. Um, this one is a very small crease brush. So if you're going in for very detailed work, this is an amazing brush, it works extremely well. It's densely packed, it gives you exactly what you need. So it's a little bit of a unique um, crease brush, because it's it's so tiny. Next is the um, Squirrel. So I do have some Wayne Goss that were Squirrel. Um, this is a crease brush you can see from him. The, you can tell that the hairs are a little bit different. Um, they're softer. They, when you use them, you get a little bit more of that, you get like more of the flattening of the brush. There's not as much resilience, if you will. Um, so they're a little bit more uh, delicate. This one is a Suku brush. Again, it has, this one has more of a flatter, it has a flatter top. It's not as candlelight shaped, it's not as pointed. So this is gonna be like a broader, you know, kind of crease brush. It's gonna give you that like wider look. This squirrel, which again, really, really soft. You can see this is a very small crease brush. It's not quite a pencil brush, but it's close. Um, but really beautiful, very soft, uh, creates like, especially if you're going to the inner corner, you're trying to get like a detail piece in there. I think this one is, is excellent. I really enjoy using that one. Which ones are my favorite? So one that I didn't mention, because I wanted to sort of pull it out, because it's the one I, I tend to go for this one, like for general 
pre like transition. That's the classic crease by Sonya G. This is the, the sky set, so the blue one. I find this one is the perfect shape for my eye. Um, it's broad, but not too broad. It, it's, it's big, but not too big. So I really love this shape. There are times though that I want a, a bigger, more diffused look. And that's when I go for this Wayne Goss. This was a 03. Again, this is the, the squirrel, but you can see how it's fluffier. Not too much bigger, but bigger. So I get more of that diffused look, which I like. I also use the Suku in the same kind of manner because you can see they're very similar. The, the difference is the Wayne Goss is more pointed, the Suku is flatter. So depending on what kind of look I want, I go for that. Um, but then another brush that I did not mention because it was saying it's kind of a unique shape and not everyone will love this. These are the Surratt brushes and these are like candlelight br brushes, not like the Wayne Goss because the Wayne Goss are, are, are very, very pointed. But you see how you have a similarity in shape. There's sort of this point that it comes to. And also these hairs are short and then you get this much longer in the middle. So when you use this, this is the kind of brush that you get that sort of perfect diffused look every time. Like you don't have to brush it out. You don't have to diffuse it out. This kind of does it for you. So if you're looking for a really diffused look, I would say go with this one. Now, I don't know if this brush, I don't know if, I think you can still get the Surratt brushes like this. I'm pretty sure you can. I think Surratt still has these on the site. Um, this one is a medium, I believe. I don't think this is the large. Let me double check and just make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's the medium because the large is pretty large. Yeah, okay, here's the large. So this is the large, this is the medium one. The large you can also use as a very diffuse look, but I kind of use this one underneath for powder. That's, that's how I use that one. But again, the Surratt one, I'd say that's probably my second, no, that's my third favorite. The first one is, is the Classic Crease by Sonya G. And then the second one is the Wayne Goss, the uh, number three. So this one, this one, and then this one. So let's use this one today. And you can see how that works with a transition shade. So we're gonna take this deep orange. And again, this is goat, so it's gonna pick up a little bit more. But you can see how it diffuses out the color. So it's not so, um, it's not so stiff or dense that you're only going to get, you know, in one, sh in one area. Let's talk pencil brushes. So pencil brushes, what I consider a pencil brush is a short stubby brush. Um, they look like this. <laughs> And I don't have as many short stubby brushes, so let's just put them all together. Um, there is a little bit difference in size here and difference a little bit in shape. Some are more pointed, some are more rounded. Um, this is a Chikahoto, and this was the, um, the uh, series that came out. It's a purple series um, a couple years ago. Last year? Can't even remember. Um, and this is, is Goat. Psychoho. Really nice, like comfortable, easy to use brush. Then we have the Sony G. This is the pencil one brush. It's literally called the pencil brush. Uh, we have the Wayne Goss. This is the zero five brush. We have the Sony G. You can see very much pencil brush. And then we have the FO zero seven. Now don't get me wrong. There's other brushes. It's just, these are the ones I have now. So, the, the way I would describe these is these three for me are almost interchangeable. Not, not totally. You can see this is rounder, this is pointier, this is shorter. But for me, I don't use pencil brushes that often. Uh, the only pencil brush I use a lot is this one. This is the Wayne Goss 05 because I use this one, believe it or not, um, to like, um, 
to smudge out my eyeliner a lot of the time. And I can also do it with this one, this pencil brush here, which is the Sony G. But other than that, I don't use a lot of pencil brushes. When I do an inner, eye, inner corner, I have a special brush for inner corner highlight. So I would say the ones that are my favorite are this one, which is the Wayne Goss 05, because I use it to smudge out liner. And then if I'm gonna do inner corner, I'm not using my inner corner brush, I'll use this. Um, and then for a smudger, uh, this pencil one by Sony G. And then I would say the FO7, if I'm gonna use something like to put it like just color right here, and I wanna keep it specific. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. I'm gonna take the um, FO and take a little bit of this shimmer and put that on the inner corner instead of using an inner corner brush. Works really well. And then I'm gonna take the um, Wayne Goss brush and use this as liner. Now, if you want a very, very thin line, I would not recommend using it like that because it's gonna be a little bit thicker. But I, I like my liner to be a little more smudged out, a little bit more I don't like a super tight line. I feel like that just sort of ages me. Um, not always, but I do feel like that that's kind of what it looks like. So those are all the, the categories in general. I do want to talk about a couple of special brushes. So one is this gray scroll brush. This is by um, Suku. Can you see how it's like a tilted, almost like a highlighting brush, but for the eyes? So what this does, and I'm gonna show you guys, oh, Claire Brun from Chanel. So take the brush like this, just put it into the, and this is gonna create almost a perfect wing just by placing it down. Isn't that amazing? This is a great little brush. I really like this one. And again, it's just a slight, you can, do it along your lash lines as well, but it's a perfect little wing. It's just, it's fantastic. Uh, the other thing I wanna mention, another little brush, is this new one by Wayne Goss. This is an E6. It's the tiniest little smudger brush I have ever seen. And I feel like this is the kind of brush that you could use to just, you know, really close to your lashes, smudge things out. Because see how tiny it is? That's gonna really get into the lash. So a lot of times people will complain about like their lashes, the mascara doesn't make their lashes look as long because the base is like not a dark color. If you use this to smudge your liner into your lash, it's gonna make your lashes look um, thicker and bigger and it's also gonna give you that line without having a thick line on your upper eye. Especially if you have hooded lashes, I mean hooded lashes, hooded uh, lids, this will really help keep that line thin but effective. So that's the new brush by Wayne Goss E6. Really, really nice. And then the last thing I wanna mention uh, for eyes is like an under eye um, powder brush. Uh, there's a couple that I like. One is a synthetic. This is the A506. I didn't talk about too many synthetics in this video because I, I've mentioned in my other video that Angie Hot and Flashy, Rose and Ben, uh, Hourglass and Rare Beauty, all have really good brushes. My favorite are the Angie Hot and Flashy from um, BK Beauty. Pick those up, they're really, really good. I don't know about her new, um, I don't know about her new uh, collab, but I'm sure they're great. These are my favorites. And this brush is great for an under eye powder. You can just take it. Here's the pink powder by Westman and press it in. Pretty good, right? The powder has something to do with that, but this brush is fantastic. So this is my favorite. Um, and then another brush that I mentioned just a little while ago, this is the um, the Surratt Large Candlelight Brush. Basically, what I do is go like this. It just, it's a beautiful, it lays down product really well and it doesn't you know irritate your eyes or cause powder sort of set in because it's just sort of so um, so light and fluffy. And back again with some uh, mascara and let's talk about final recommendations. So I gave you my top three for each brush shape. And again, these are very broad categories and go into a ton of depth. But I would say that um, the Wayne Goss 
set, the Wayne Goss eye set, or pick up the individual brushes. I mean, like this brush is just a really unique brush. I haven't even gotten to play around with this one yet, but I've started to use, I mean, I used it, but I haven't like, you know, been able to, to use it for multiple purposes yet. Um, I just feel like the hairs are beautiful. I feel like the way that he's designed these brushes are from multiple different like types of, you know, um, uses. I just, I'm very impressed. Uh, I've said it a couple of times. I feel like there's some, some great different shapes here. Um, we've got the E1, the E4, this is the, the E3. Like, look at the difference in brushes shapes. Like, like this one, again, gives you just a really great point if you want to get that specific. This is a great lay down brush, flat lay down brush. And this is like, you know, the, the Worker One brushes from Sony G. So I really recommend the new Wayne Goss eye sets or get them individually. Again, I have not tried the new Sonya G brushes. Um, the thing about the Sonya G brushes, the new ones, uh, again, I'm not saying anything bad about them, but I don't know what level of, of goat hair they are. It just says goat. That tends, leads me to believe it's the lowest, but doesn't mean it is. Um, so sometimes they don't, you know, tell you which kind. Uh, in previous versions, though, it did. In previous versions, it said Sai Coho or Sai B Coho or whatever the case is. And the ones for Wayne Goss do say Sai Coho. So I know they're, they're a better quality. Um, and I can just tell you by looking at them, the quality is beautiful. The sheen on them is great. And the lay down, the way they work, just absolutely amazing. So I'm still going to say like overall, the Wayne Goss brushes, the eye brushes are my number one pick. Um, the Sonya G Sky Eye Brush Set is also excellent. It's not new. They've been around for, those brushes have been around for a while. I use them all the time. They're amazing. Individual brushes like the Lotus, the, the small definer brush, I think that's a fantastic brush for like delicate or specific crease work. Really, really good. The, um, the brush that um, gives you that literally uh, cat eye or, or flick or whatever you want to call it, um, the Suku brush, I don't know how hard this is to find. It's just an angled eye brush. This is an amazing brush and I use it a lot to just, you know, <laughs> to do that little flick. It just makes it easy. Um, Kalinsky eye brushes, I would certainly recommend that if you're somebody who has a lot of products that are metallic or shimmery or hard to pick up or you want them to be more impactful, yes, I would say pick up at least one Kalinsky brush but they're really hard to find. They're really just difficult to get. And then last but not least, again, as I mentioned in the other video, and it sounds like a broken record, but if you have very sensitive eyes, eyes that are prone to swell, or you have allergies or any of those things, the, the, the scroll brushes are much softer. So the Z series is, is great. The Silver Fox ones are also really nice. Um, the the FO series, the Zen series doesn't exist, but the, well, it exists, but you, you know, you can't get them uh, on first, you have to get them on secondary markets, but the FO series is beautiful. Um, and they have some great brushes that work extremely well for the eyes and they're very soft. And they're gonna, again, have a little more pigment lay down than the squirrels, but not as much as the goats, but the goats are a little less soft, generally. Not always, generally. So, you know, again, it, it does depend on it does depend on what, what you're looking for. If you're just somebody who's looking for like a good set of brushes and you just don't want to spend like, you know, in the hundreds of dollars type of thing, I honestly would tell you to go out and pick up the Angie Hot and Flashy brushes if they're available. The BK Beauty ones, this is one of my favorites, the A503. This is a great crease brush. This is a great transition brush. I use it all the time. Um, as I showed you, this is the one I use. This is the um, A506 for under eye powder. Um, I mean, you can see I use all the brushes because they, they need to be washed, but like here's a, a you know nice flat lay down brush. Um, here's sort of like a more of a small uh, transition slash, um, you know, detail brush. Really, the sets are excellent. Absolutely worth it. I am looking forward to trying the new BKB brushes. I haven't tried them yet, but I'm, I'm sure they're good. She, she does an amazing job. So, I know I didn't do every brush today, guys. I didn't do liner brushes. I didn't do lipstick brushes. <laughs> There's more. But I, again, I feel like both of these videos are going to be really long. And, you know, 
<laughs> it's hard enough for many people to, I, I know, to sit through like a 10 minute video, never mind a 45 minute video. So I wanted to just sort of give you a broad overview and try to give you recommendations where I could. So hopefully it was helpful. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this um, as much as I can. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon.